So today we are going to address a lot of the questions, concerns, and some great suggestions that came out um, when Joe shared in his Cup of Joe episode that we're looking to downsize to a camper van. Before we get into that, uh, we wanted to do a quick mail day. One of the main questions that we get from friends, family, businesses, everyone is how can we send you mail? Uh, <laughs> there are many ways to send us mail, um, but our primary residence is in Texas. We have an escapees uh, membership, and what that allows us to do is to subscribe to their mail forwarding service. And however frequently we want, we can give them a call and let them know, hey, we are going to be at this address. Can you please send all the mail that you've been holding for us to either a friend's house or general delivery at a US post office? Um, a lot of times we have it sent to campgrounds. So we were recently with Joe's really good friend in New Lenox, Illinois, and he was gracious enough to let us send a bunch of packages to his house. Um, Joe already opened one of the packages, which mm, was the a, Kona coffee. Yep, That's the good. Kona coffee from Rebecca. Yep. But we still have other mail we haven't opened, so we thought we'd do a quick mail day. Uh, but let's see what we've got. Yep. So the first package, uh, this is what we got from Escapees. Always carry a pocket knife with you. Junk mail. We usually get a lot of junk mail. Junk mail from our stay at Disney. Uh, junk mail from American Airlines. Tax info that's probably late now. It's a good thing we actually didn't file, we just filed an extension. So we got a decent amount of mail. Yep. We'll have to go through this when we get a chance. Okay, so this is really exciting. For those of you who watched our A Day with Leo, our Siberian Husky, uh, we actually went to the post office because one of our subscribers sent us a bag of tennis balls for Leo general delivery, and I'm pretty sure we got another package. So this is really exciting. Get my pocket knife out here. <laughs> <laughs> we got more tennis balls for Leo. Thank you, Mr. Choo Choo. <laughs> Thank you! Leo loves these. So the other one we have, <clears throat> we were contacted uh, by a company to check out one of their products. And let's see. And one of the things we do is if, if we know we're getting a package, we usually prefer to have that sent general delivery to a nearby post office or to a RV park that we're staying at. Because having packages sent to the escapees office and then having that forwarded is is more expensive because we're getting a package forwarded. It's called a Cupsy. Yes, a Versatile cups. drink organizer. Looks like there's a little remote holder, two cup holders, and then these little leg things. It says convenient and stable drink organizer. Oh, it's got flip down arms for wine glasses. <laughs> so you just take the wine, you take the stem of the wine glass and hook it on right there. That's it's too bad we got rid of all of our stemmed wine glasses. <laughs> yeah, but I think the stemless <laughs> will fit in here. Oh, so. look, there's there's a way you can insert it into the couch and split the legs up. There we go. Oh, that's kind of neat. With the camera angle we're using, you can't really see it. But what I've done is... I'll hold it. On the side of our couch here, there's a nice little area where I can stick these legs. I stick those down, and then my cup of coffee goes right in there. For everyone at Cupsy, thank you so much for sending this to us. We're going to have a lot of fun playing with it. I love the wine glass holder on the side. Yeah, that's really cool. Hopefully that answered some of the questions that you all have had about getting mail while you're on the road. There are a lot of options. Now on to the second part of this. When I posted my Cup of Joe and talked about the fact that we're looking to downsize to a Class B camper van, there was a whole flurry of questions and concerns about <clears throat> you know our relationship um the fact that we'd be going from a class a rv down to a class b and we'd probably kill each other inside of it uh, and we just wouldn't be happy with it there's some of you out there who full time into class b vans and we got some encouraging comments about it a lot of suggestions everyone thank you so much for those suggestions what we wanted to do is we kind of wanted to go through some of the the general questions that we got about why we're considering doing this and answer those and really kind of clarify what it is we're looking to do. You know, we are still in the research phase of 
looking to downsize. We haven't made the decision that we're definitely going to downsize, but it's something that we've been considering. Since we've minimized our life and moved into the RV, we've really learned that we don't need very much stuff. Um, and as much as we enjoy our class A, we notice that we don't use a lot of the rooms in here. Like the bedroom, the bedroom we only use to watch TV um, and sleep. Uh, you know, we have our closets and stuff in there, but that's a whole side of the RV that if it had a multifunction purpose, let's say the bed converted into a couch, um, we'd be using that area a lot more. Uh, the dinette has become more of a storage area for us underneath and on top. We don't use the dinette all that often. Kate will work at it sometimes. I typically just sit in the front seat of the coach with my little pull-out desk, and I work there all the time. So. When we looked at this RV and how much room there is, we're only using very small parts of it. So we realize we don't need as much room. And I think part of the research phase is, first of all, figuring out if a camper van is really gonna suit our lifestyle. One of the main reasons why we're considering a camper van is even with a 30 foot class A RV, which is considered small in most respects, uh, there are a lot of places we can't get into or it makes it very difficult. Uh, we like to be nimble. We move around quite a bit. Um, you know, we were actually talking about settling down and spending a couple weeks in just one place, but that's kind of out of the usual for us. And with a camper van, we can really get into those tight areas, mountain roads, a lot of things where taking the Class A RV just isn't feasible or something you'd, you know, be comfortable doing. What might be helpful is to talk about all the things that, all the benefits we see with a Class B, mm -hmm. right? So when we're driving through those mountain roads, being able to pull off into a pullout, no problem in a Class B, but in a Class A, we can barely fit, especially if we're also towing a car. Um, other things such as, we've been visiting a lot of friends mm -hmm. and they've all invited us to camp at their house, on their driveway, in their backyard where they have room. But a lot of times we're finding we're too big to fit on their driveway. And if we had a smaller rig like a Class B or a B plus, we would have no problem. The other bright benefit we see is a Class B gets way better gas mileage than our Class A. We've been averaging pretty consistently six and a half miles per gallon. Yep. And that's pretty painful. And with a Class B, we're looking at probably 15 to 18 miles to the gallon. Actually, uh, if we get one of the Mercedes-Benz diesel chassis, uh, a lot of people have reported they get anywhere between 18 to 24. We would probably end up driving separately. And some people have said, well, you know, you're going to be using more gas with two vehicles, more wear and tear. But to be honest with you, if we got 18 uh, miles per gallon in the camper van, we also get about 17, let's say 18 in the Jeep. Uh, that average is out to about nine miles a gallon. It's still a lot better than the RV. In terms of wear and tear, the Jeep is going through quite a bit of wear and tear as we drive down the road. Now the Jeep isn't running, of course, and we're not driving it, but it's still being towed behind the RV. Uh, the brakes get used every time we brake the RV. Uh, the tires wear down. You know, there are a lot of other little components here and there that have to be maintained and looked at. The other thing is maintenance cost. A Class A is getting to be very expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, we're having to replace our windshield. The giant windshield is about two thousand yeah, dollars. That's not counting labor. Correct. Um, we're not going to have that problem in a Class B camper van because it's a more normal windshield and we're less prone to rock chips. Um, much comfortable driving position. That's one of our biggest complaints about a Class A is we feel like we're in our living room driving down the road, sitting on top of the tire, as opposed to feel like feeling like we're sitting in an actual car. When we've been driving through the Midwest, uh, especially, there are a lot of country roads where things are beautiful and you want to go see stuff like Lincoln's birthplace. When we were driving there, we were on a single lane road with big rigs and farm implements going in the other direction there was a drop off on the side of the road, no shoulder. And our class A, as we're driving past a lot of these rigs, we're getting pushed all over the place. Um, it was not a fun drive. Cause think about it. I mean, we're driving something that is as wide as a big rig. Uh, in many respects, we're taller. We're 12 foot, eight inches. You know, we look at stuff like that. And when you drive through a town, you've got low bridges and a lot of low trees. 
Uh, for trucks driving down the road, that's not a big issue unless it's a you know a sturdy branch. But when you have the smaller branches in that, it can take off things on the roof, like your AC unit. It can scratch the um, the membrane on the roof and cause all sorts of problems. So it's always something we're considering and something we're concerned about when we get into a new town and we're going down some of those smaller roads. So we understand if we downsize to anything smaller than what we have, we have to make sacrifices, especially if we're looking at a class B. I will say, I think the biggest sacrifice we would have to make going smaller, especially to a camper van, is the, sh the wet bath. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would be able to shower in the b bathrooms that I have seen, um, except for the Travato that has the bathroom layout in the, in the back. I think it would be one of those things where we'd use the wet bath to you know kind of rinse off take a quick shower sponge bath <laughs> yeah and then uh you know the longer showers we would either go to a campground um stay at a hotel for a few days or something along those lines to kind of recharge and we do that now anyway when we go to a campground even though we have the full-size shower in here we still go use their shower because we love the water pressure unlimited hot water in a lot of instances and it's just nice to be able to spread out so it wouldn't be anything really new for us the way i like to think about it is wherever we park our house the outside is really our playground and when the weather is nice we're not inside so although a class b is small you know we can go outside find a cafe to work from um, go somewhere else and not be cooped up um, and feel like we're confined to a class b yeah one of the really appealing things for me about downsizing is reevaluating the stuff that we have and getting rid of a lot of it. You know, we're approaching this lifestyle with a different perspective from when we purchased the Class A. And you know, it's you don't know what you need until you live that lifestyle. Yep. And now that we've done it for coming up to a year, living full time out of this thing, our perspective has changed and our needs have changed and so have our requirements. And when you start RVing, you realize when you get invited to someone else's RV, you bring your own glassware, you bring yep. your own water, and you offer to bring your own plates and silverware because that's just how it's done. And we didn't know that. So we thought we had to have, you know, not only enough stuff for us, but to be able to host everyone else. So it's a really different lifestyle and we really embraced it. For those of you who have reached out and said, hey, I saw your video about downsizing. I'm wondering if the coach I'm considering is too big. I, the thing I would say is, you know, everyone travels differently. We all have different needs and what we're looking for out of traveling around in an RV. And you really can't say for sure how much room, what kind of layout you're going to need until you live in it full time. And I think that's part of the reason why people go through so many different RVs because yeah their needs adjust and change um, as things change in their life. You know, we started this trip with two large dogs and now that we have Leo, this coach seems much bigger than what yeah. it was when there we started. Was, there was no way when we had Duke at the beginning of this trip <clears throat> that we could have gone in a camper van. And it's one of those things you have to consider. There was enough room in here for both of them to walk around. There'd be no way to do that in a class B, but now that we just have Leo, it makes more sense for us and our lifestyle has changed as we've been on the road. I think if we had started in the camper van, it would have been a much bigger transition for us to go from the house to the van. And I think we would have had a lot more problems initially, like trying to figure out the life. It's been a lot easier to do in the class A and now that we've done it and we realize this is more than we need, we see how we can downsize. We are looking at all types of options, but we're primarily focused on class B's right now because that's what we've been looking at and we've gone into a lot of them uh, and they're really nice. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely see myself living out of one. Um, and we certainly have reached out to other people who live out of theirs full time and it definitely seems manageable. Um, those sacrifices you make, you can get around. And so far, I mean, we've looked at the Winnebago view. Uh, we actually found one when we were down at Lazy Days that we really liked the layout of. A Winnebago era, uh, we love the Winnebago Travato. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some nice, there's a floor plan we really like there. Uh, what was the one we saw at the Tampa show with the full bathroom in the back? The Activa or... They make higher end Mercedes chassis class B's and there's a full bathroom in the back. That was awesome. But we still weren't in the mindset that we wanted to downsize. Um, so we didn't look at them from a perspective of, can we live in this? We need to start our research and 
actually start shopping with a completely different mindset because when you go in one of these and you just look at it for the fun of it it seems like everything is really cool mm -hmm. when you start breaking it down and you actually like walk into the shower or the bathroom close the doors and pretend to take a shower that's when you realize that the shower here may be too small for me to use on a regular basis and we really need to go through that process to figure out if a class B is something that we could live in without you know killing each other or that mm -hmm. which brings me to my next point a lot of people were actually concerned after the video that uh, there was something wrong with <laughs> Kate and I's relationship because we wanted to drive separately um, the reason for this as I mentioned earlier is a lot of the class B vans don't have the towing capacity in order to tow the Jeep with it but when we talk through the process of okay um, we're, we're in our camper van and we don't have a tow car with us if we go to a park or wherever we are anytime we want to go out we have to pack the van up drive the van to you know someplace even just to Redbox to rent a movie and then come back and reset everything up that's something we didn't want to do also we love going off-road and the Jeep is the perfect vehicle for that um, plus it's nice to have a backup so if we need to take the RV in to have work done you know it's nice to have that second vehicle and not be stuck in the waiting room we ultimately came to the conclusion that the driving separately would be the perfect solution to not having to worry about the tow capacity mm -hmm. in a class B but also the carrying capacity the Jeep could take a lot of the load that we can't put into the class B so we can store water our picnic table chairs all those kinds of things uh -huh. um, and it just seemed like a perfect solution to us and then as we talked about it more we realized hey if we drive separately every week or every other week then we have a little bit of alone time yeah it's not it's not like we're going to be driving every day and we're <laughs> going to take a couple hours away from each other we probably will be driving let's say once a week and we try to keep that under 150 miles um, per move that we make so you're talking about two, two and a half hours we have a week away from each other and we're spending 24 hours a day around each other so it's nice to take that break. Yeah, yeah. and we do everything together. I mean, like renting a red box, we jump in the Jeep, take Leo, we do everything as a family. Yeah. Um, so there's nothing wrong with our relationship and our being, as we've mentioned, has actually made our relationship stronger. And I think that's what makes us feel really comfortable about downsizing and you know making a change. The other thing that came up was finances um, and taking a hit on our current RV if we sell it and get a class B. And we know that you know some of the sprinter class B's can cost as much if not more than our current class A coach. Leo has decided to join us. You can see his little ears. Yeah he actually he saw the the tennis balls. Buddy. <laughs> He's Le going through the bag trying to find a ball he likes. <laughs> I have to give it to him. He's seen it and now... It's all he can think about. Now we do realize we would take a financial hit on this RV uh, due to the depreciation over the course of a year and not keeping it for longer. It's one of the things that we're considering and we're thinking about during our research. We would love to do this in Europe. Um, so we also see the benefit of downsizing to a camper van to really get, an, get a better feel we're living in a camper van in a smaller space and traveling around so that we'll have a better idea of how that will suit yep. us if we decide to go international. This is all stuff that we're considering and talking about and I would say we're in the very beginning stages of looking to downsize. It's definitely not for everyone just like RVing isn't for everyone. Yeah. Our RV lifestyle is probably very different from a lot of the fellow RVers we've met. For us we're really focused on having those experiences um, and being able to go off the beaten path and see things and not have to worry about how big we are, if we're going to get run off the road or not be able to turn around. Um, you know, those are some of the things, but I will say this coach has been great for what we're doing yeah, it's and been we fantastic. love it. So we hope that helped answer a lot of questions, kind of alleviate some concerns about what we're doing. Um, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of you that are still concerned, you know, for us moving down to a class B is going to be a mistake. Um, you know, but we'll see. It's still a decision we're trying to make and work through and everything else. And we really appreciate all the comments. Uh, a couple of you have left different RVs that we should look at, either Class Bs or B Pluses. 
And some of this stuff we've never even heard of before. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. And we even had one of our followers offer to let us take his camper van out for a weekend just to test it out. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I mean, we really appreciate all we the do. support and the feedback that you've given us. I um, mean, it's really helped us, you know, look at different options and take things into consideration. And even those of you who made comments saying this is going to be a bad idea, we appreciate those as well because it gives us food for thought. And sometimes when you're looking at things through your own lens, uh, everything's rosy colored until someone else points out something you may not have even thought of. So we're taking all of that into consideration. Yeah, thank you. You know, if it weren't for the feedback, positive or negative from everybody, we could be in a 45 foot coach yeah, right now. Exactly. Uh, feeling really overwhelmed with the amount of space we have. We hope you found this video somewhat interesting and helpful. Um, and if you have additional questions, feel free to leave a comment um, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. yeah, thanks guys. And now I'm almost out of coffee. So have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Thank you for watching.